Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Forever Home by Birdwood Games. This is a one to five player game that takes roughly 20 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Forever Home, you are going through the adoption process of dogs, sending them on their way to their new home. Could be to the city, suburbs, countryside, or a foster home. This is a game in which you're going to gather dogs and their objective cards and collect them by placing them in certain patterns and then sending them on their way. You can gather different points scoring by the three different mechanisms in the game and this is a tile puzzly style game where you're going to go until a certain number of objective cards have been reached by a single player. When that happens, you'll tally up your points and see who has the most and the player who has the most points has fostered the most dogs off and is the winner of the game. We'll talk about how to set the game up how to play, and then of course, our review. To set up the game Forever Home, the first thing you'll do is determine the number of players playing the game. And if you are playing a two-player game, you're going to give each player a singular player board. If you want to play the basic version of the game, take this side. And if you want to play the advanced side, take this one here. The difference between them is that on the advanced side, in certain squares on the grid are going to be unique actions that you can take as soon as you place a dog on those spaces. But for now, we'll start with the basic. Place that down in front of you facing you, and then take the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Take one of each of the unique seven dogs and place them in these different seven areas provided on the rectangular spaces in each of the columns. There are three types. There is the uh, most in a training, the most rehome dogs, and the most in different homes. Each dog is a different color and presents a different type of dog. Take the main game deck of cards and shuffle these guys up here. It's going to be the family with the different dog on the specific cards. Make sure that it's placed within reach of all players. Give each player two of those cards from the shuffled deck, and then go ahead and set out four dogs from this bag here. This bag should have all the dog tiles in it, and they should have all the seven different dog types. Placing four random of these out, you'll then take four cards from this deck here and place four out right underneath the dog tiles. Then you can go ahead and take the four main scoring cards. Now there's a variety of different ones, so make sure you have one city, one suburb, one countryside, and a foster home card, and place it within reach of all players. Then before the game starts, you're actually going to do a draft of dogs. So based on the number of players, you'll take out a certain number of dogs from the bag. In a two-player game, you will take out four dogs, and then you'll have the first player, the player is going to be going first in the game, select a dog and place it on their grid. The second player will get the second and third option, placing those dogs on their grid, and then finally we'll go back to the first player, giving them a dog to place on their board. And then the game is ready to begin. Playing the game Forever Home is as simple as the setup. At the beginning of the game, the first player will select to take two actions. There are three different actions to take, and you can take any number of those actions in any order as long as you only take two. The first of those actions is you can take a dog. There are four dogs available to you in a two-player game, but there are more in higher number counts. Take one of those dogs and then place it anywhere you want on your grid. There's no rules or requirements for placement as long as you put the dog in the square on your grid. After you place any dog, you are going to take a dog from the bag and place it where the previous dog was taken from. The next action you can take is a card. You can take any one of these dog cards here. Each dog card is going to represent how many dogs you have to rehome from this specific list of dogs from the placement and how many points you get when you turn this card in. This card here specifically says you have to have three of the same color dog spaced out in a line with no dogs in between them. And if you do have that, you can turn that in as an objective and you'll be able to rehome one of these three dogs and score two points at the end of the game. You can take this card, you'll put it in your hand with a max of five cards, but don't forget you start with two. Then, once again, you will take a card as opposed to a dog and refill it in. So you will always have the same number of cards and dogs that you start out with. The last action is also pretty simple. You can move a dog on your grid. Your grid is a square grid. It is a five by five, and you can place your dogs wherever you want on your grid. And movement is the same. You're able to move a dog anywhere you want one space. So if I have a dog in the middle area of the board, I can move it up down, left, right, or any diagonal direction I'd like. If I do that, that will take an action. So on my turn, I can take any two of these actions, and I can take the same one twice. I can take two dog tokens, I can take two dog cards, 
a dog card and a token. I can move a dog, I can move a dog twice, move a dog, take a card, and I can take a dog and move a dog. Once you have taken your actions, at any point on your turn, you can turn in your dog cards. And like I said, when you turn a dog card in, as long as you meet the requirements, you have to rehome the dogs. When you rehome a dog, so for instance, if I had a card that said something like, mm, we'll go ahead and select this one here, the one I already explained. This is the same color dog, no dog. Same color dog, no dog, same color dog. And I'll go ahead and select these three red dogs here, and I'll place them as though I'd place them for the pattern. So dog, dog, and dog. I turn this card in, my turn is basically over, I've used my actions, and I'll place this face down somewhere next to me, and I can rehome one of the dogs. So I'll select one of the three dogs, so as you can see I've got a red dog, no dog, red dog, no dog, red dog, and I'll place it in either the city, suburbs, countryside, or foster home. I'll just simply take that token and place it in one of those areas there. And at the end of the game I'm going to score a bonus of two points for turning in this pattern. What's the important aspect of turning in dogs to the areas as opposed, not, not, not in, in just the um, abstract sense of your rehoming dogs, which is always very important, but there are points associated to rehoming dogs at the end of the game. This main game is going to give you points, and it's going to be based on the different dogs that are provided you there. So for instance, the most in training is going to be uh, three points if you have the most red dogs in training, which is your basic grid here, and one point if you have the most blue dogs. Then you have the most rehomed dogs, which is going to be three points for any uh, pink dog that is the if you have the most pink dogs rehomed, two points for purple and one point for green, and then the most different homes. So if I have a yellow in every single one of these four different areas, and I have the most of them, uh, then I'm going to score three points, and then of course orange will give you one. These can be mixed and matched and will be different each game. The cards here are also going to score you points. For instance, Suburbs. If you place dogs in a suburb, as long as you have a blue, green, yellow, and any color dog, you'll score an additional seven points in the game. Countryside will give you three points for every two of the same color dog. The city is going to score you bonus points for each different color dog you have up to seven different colors, because that's all there is. You could be either scoring three, five, eight, ten, uh, eleven, or fifteen. And then finally you have the foster home, which is always the same card, which will score you one point for each dog in the foster home, regardless of color, because at least he's going somewhere. So these are the three different areas of scoring. The cards that you turn in, and then the dogs that you bring into different homes will score you either on this main game board, which is ever-changing, or on these cards, which is ever-changing throughout the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Take two actions, make sure you're always refilling whenever you're taking, and pass the turn. Always make sure you turn cards in before you pass, or right after an action, the next player will go, and you'll rinse and repeat, refilling the board along with these tokens and these cards here. The game is over in a two-player game when seven of these cards have been turned in. Make sure that each player has equal turns and then score. Whoever has the most points is the winner of Forever Home. Forever Home is a dog rehoming slash fostering game. This is all about making sure that you get the, the, the dogs, placing them into your shelter, and then training them and getting them out into the world, whether it be a foster home or a suburb, city, or countryside home with a good family. And that's a really, really great message to send. And there's not a whole lot of dog games out there, and I've reviewed three of them that I know of. There is Dogs, uh, there is a Dog's Life, and now I've played Forever Home. The difference between those games and this one is this is a puzzling or puzzles type game in which we are building the dogs into specific patterns, turning those pattern cards in, rehoming the dogs from the pattern into four different areas and scoring points based on how you rehome them. Each game is going to require you to do different things with different colored dogs, whether it be the different dogs available on the main game board, or the different types of patterns in the different areas based on the cards in the countryside, suburbs, and city. Because remember, the foster card is always going to be the same. One dog for any color, as long as it goes there, it's a guaranteed point and it's worth doing. I love the idea of having a bunch of different types of objectives for a bunch of different scoring methods. They also have the cards here. The cards are going to score you between 0 and 3 victory points at the end of the game, and they'll let you rehome zero to three dogs. Rehoming dogs, dogs will score you points along with the victory points presented on the cards. All the cards have different patterns and there's quite a few of them here and they represent a pretty straightforward idea. 
every one of these kind of yellowish looking dogs, yellow orange, like a kind of, I don't know that kind of color exactly, but it is gonna represent one color. And then you have the brown dogs which represent the other color. So in this case here, you have to have two hot dogs of the same color and one of any other color. Or if you have this one here, which is the one we talk about a lot, it is three dogs of the same color, but any spaces with an X represents no dogs. So you can't have dogs there. And there's larger patterns, all up to smaller patterns. And you can kind of choose, uh, pick and choose how you want this game to go. This game can take quite a little bit of time. This could be a 20 minute game. This could be a 45 minute game. Uh, you could choose to kind of rummy it up with this game where you're holding cards, placing dogs down, and eventually just start turning things in because you can turn in multiple cards at the same time as long as you have the patterns of dogs required. The game's puzzliness and strategy comes into play when you are attempting to rehome the dogs when playing the cards. You can't simply turn in all the cards all at once and then rehome the dogs. You have to play a card, rehome a dog or dogs, and then play the next card provided you can as long as you're still meeting the pattern. And so as you remove dogs, certain patterns will be removed from the game, allowing you to have less dogs in your shelter and then having you to have to replace them with new dogs out in the streets area. And you're going to rinse and repeat creating this kind of grid of dogs. It's got a great puzzly feel to it. It's got a great idea of not just working with the cards and objectives or the open objectives, but also with this main dog board that changes the color throughout the game. And every game you play is gonna have different colored dogs in the different areas, but still the same style of scoring mechanism. The main, one main thing I wish would be a little different, which they did do in the advanced mode of the game, is include these different actions on the game board. This now gives this area here, the uh, shelter, kind of a, a value, a use. Placing a dog in certain areas will allow you to move other dogs or draw cards or swap your dogs around on your game board, which will provide some advanced tactics to you. What I'd like to see, actually, in a game like this, or maybe an expansion in a game like this, is placards or cards you can place over your shelter that provide different, but also still the same balance of card or of actions that can be placed here. Um, and the reason why I like that is because the game it doesn't really matter as much where you place your dogs. You're gonna be removing dogs as you build patterns, so it's very, very unlikely, at least as far as I've seen, that you're gonna be filling up this game board, unless you're playing that rummy style, where you hold as many cards as you can and dump as many as you can. And the reason why you're probably not gonna do that is because once somebody hits seven, the rounds and the game will end, and if you don't have an extra turn, you can't turn your dogs in. So you have to kind of be careful, a little bit of a push your luck if you're doing that strategy. And so I found to notice, or I noticed to find that this game board isn't super relevant. You could probably even cut out almost a good one third of the board and it still won't matter as far as placing dogs down because most of the dog patterns are quite small. Regardless though, that's not a huge deal for me. It didn't bother me. I just saw a lot of potential in the area for the shelter board. I really love the objectives. I love the different choices you can make, the styles of placing dogs and how you can add patterns and secure additional cards and kind of combo off one pattern to another, removing dogs and rehoming them and scoring as many as you possibly can on a turn to make a really big play to mess with your opponents. This game feels like a little bit of a solitaire style game where you're not actually going after your opponents or messing with their game board anyway, but based on the dogs and cards that you choose, that might affect how your opponent's turn is going to act as opposed to how they normally would have played. That being said though, it's still a pretty casual game that's not super heavy hitter. It's not a really aggressive style game. And it's also not a super light game. Um, I'd say it's kind of like a medium style game with a little bit of choice that can mess with your opponents. And I think that really works well for these puzzle style games. The artwork in the game is beautiful. All the dogs are wonderful looking. All the cards have beautiful, vivid imagery of tons of different color, uh, types of dogs of different colors. The different locations and the different city areas and the suburbs and the countryside all represent on the back of these cards here. And of course, just families playing with their dogs. It's a great dog style game. And there's not a whole lot of those dog games out there. So this is a really cool game for you dog lovers out there. If you love a puzzle game, if you love the different objectives and scoring abilities, that you can go ahead and play with and you like a game that's simple straightforward to play three main actions that you can learn just by looking at your game board and this is one i strongly and highly suggest
Now, maybe I'm a little biased here. I'm going to announce my bias because my wife made a game called Moonshell, which functions similarly to this game with some differences. Um, her game is more of a Tetris slash like Candy Crush feel where pieces are kind of falling down and you're making patterns from falling. Whereas this game is all about placing pieces into patterns and then pulling them off. That game usually keeps the pieces right where they are with some changes in variability, which is more of a C type of a game where this is more of a dog type of a game. But overall, it's a lot of fun. I'm not normally a puzzle player, but in this case, this game is great. I am a dog person myself, and I love the dogs in this game. They're fun, they're great. The patterns, inclusion of the dogs on the cards is wonderful as well. Yes, Forever Home is a solid choice for me. I say if you love puzzle games and you love dogs, this is a guaranteed pickup. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Forever Home by Birdwood Games. If you're interested, there is a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this wonderful little dog game. You're also able too if you'd like and you've watched more than one of our videos here on YouTube subscribe to the channel and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you can see more of our videos here where we show you a bunch of indie different Kickstarter titles and indie games games coming soon even some of the more newer slash triple a games and if you would like, we have a live stream. It's every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. You can't miss it. You can watch it anywhere you'd like. They're usually about an hour or so. They're pretty quick, and they show you playing. I'll uh, show you, uh, show us, while you're watching, play a game just like this one. And in fact, we did play this one last night because it was Callie's choice to play, and this is the one she wanted to try out. And we had a lot of fun, so you can see the game played for yourself, and that might help you better determine if it's something that you would be interested in. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this one. And as always, I look forward to finding dogs a forever home with you next time.